Now let us proceed with the next subtopic on our chapter, which is 5.2 on scalar product. Now let us look at the next part that is the properties, algebraic properties of the scalar product. So there are a few properties that we need to understand and remember. So if given A, B and C are vectors and M is a scalar, so number one, we have vector A dot vector A is also equal to magnitude of vector A squared. Number two, we also have that if A dot B, it is also equal to vector B dot vector A. Number three, A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. So it is the same as we multiply that in. And then, number four, if we have a scalar M, multiply with A dot B, that is equal to M A dot B equals to A dot B times scalar M. And number 5, if we have a scalar of value of 0, multiply with any vector, we will automatically get the value for 0. The next property that we have is, if we have A dot B, and the value is equal to the magnitude of A times magnitude of B, what we can conclude is, A is parallel to B in the same direction. Okay, and if we have A dot B is equal to negative of value for magnitude A times magnitude B, then we can say that A is parallel to B but in the opposite direction if the value here is negative. The last property that we have is if we have A dot B equals to zero, then we can make a conclusion that vector A is perpendicular to vector B. Okay, so point number six and number seven is quite important and you have to remember these properties so that you can use this in your calculation for exercise. Alright, let us look at another example. So example two that we have over here is if we are given vector A with 2i plus alpha j minus k and vector B with alpha i plus alpha j plus 3k and it is perpendicular, we are given that it is perpendicular, find the value of alpha. Okay, so if it is perpendicular, if two vectors are perpendicular, that follows these properties. Vector A dot vector B is equals to zero. So now we can just perform the dot product between vector A and vector B and equate that to zero. So we're taking component A1, which is two, times with B1, which is alpha, plus with A2 times B2, so that will be alpha squared, and then plus with negative one times three. That is equals to 0. And then by rearranging, let us rearrange this. We're going to get alpha squared plus 2 alpha minus 3. That is equals to 0. Next, we can factorize this quadratic equation. So we will have alpha plus 3 times with alpha minus 1. That is equals to 0. So, our conclusion is alpha can be equals to negative 3 or alpha equals to 1. Alright, 